Mike, tell us about the um, the dashboard. It looks great, but tell us about the, the real value to show producers. Yeah, so, I mean, our concept is that we want show creators to be able to spend as much time as possible actually working on their show. Um, you shouldn't have to spend really any time on, on much of anything else other than analyzing how well your show's doing. And so what we did was we spent about a year we spent like two years looking at show creators, talking to show creators, and understanding their workflow. And we found as many pain points as we possibly could. And then we automated them. And the idea behind the new dashboard is, first of all, it's easier to use in, just in general, uh, and better design. But more importantly, it takes all of those little annoying things that you have to do as a show creator and smooths out the rough edges. That's really the idea. For me, the big takeaway today was the integration with YouTube. I think that's huge because they're allowing, you know, freewheel and other independent, you know, people to use freewheel to use other things to sell and you know, sell ads, it, it, traffic ads in the way that they should be priced. What are the opportunities, Dina, for show producers on Blip to monetize through YouTube now? And why should they go through you guys as opposed to YouTube? And how does sort of the whole sell-in sell work now? The deal with YouTube is definitely significant, uh, and it is something that we've been working on for about a year now. Uh, we're really excited to launch it and to announce it today. And one of the key things uh, of our partnership with YouTube is that a content creator can just check off a box to say, yes, I want to syndicate to YouTube, click post to post their content, and the content will go you know, behind the scenes from our servers to YouTube servers. And then, thanks to our partnership with Freewheel that we also announced today, we will actually be able to traffic ads sold on blip content but that are being watched on YouTube and because we're using freewheel it just makes it all seamless so that we don't have to fax over an IO from an advertiser like a MediaVest or Digitas or someone else we actually can let technology handle that for us uh, and seamlessly traffic ads on well, you know, well let me just follow up so are there kinds of advertisers that might be more apt to sponsor your shows than like in a way the cool thing to me as a show producer is that you could sell in ads that are interest to the beat audience but may not be Procter & Gamble. In other words, are there opportunities for smaller advertisers to be part of this? Yeah, what this enables an advertiser to do is to sponsor a show or a vertical of shows and that get 100% share of voice for those shows no matter where they no matter where they're seen. So if a show is watched on beat.tv, a show is on destination site, if it's watched on blip.tv, it's watched on YouTube, it almost doesn't matter because free will and enables you to reach the audience for a show wherever that audience is. What it, what it really comes down to at the end of the day is, you know, I think George got up there, George from YouTube got up there, and, and the first thing that he said is that in the time that I've been up here, in the last 30 seconds, something like 200 hours of video have been uploaded to YouTube. And when you're operating at that kind of scale, it's very, very hard to drill down and really determine who's the right advertiser for BTV. It's a very hard thing to do from all the way up here. We focus exclusively on independent shows and so we have a smaller body of content to work with that in many ways is sometimes more attractive for an advertiser on that individual level rather than just selling kind of run of network and what we can do is we can take beat TV which reaches everybody who's involved in the web TV business and we can put you in a category with let's say 10 or 15 other shows that reach people who are interested in digital media um, together you guys reach a significant audience which we can then take to a sponsor like Akamai and say you can own this audience everywhere the show is watched on the internet, whether it be on YouTube or iTunes, AOL, MSN, or frankly on the television set through Verizon or TiVo or anyone like that. And typically when you're doing that kind of targeting, which is very hard for somebody who only has a slice of the audience and who ha operates at that scale to do, um, you can typically demand higher CPMs for that, which is ultimately better for the show creator. Um, the targeting is better, there's less waste, which means that they're actually paying less for, the advertiser is actually paying less for everyone who is actually in their target audience, even though they're paying a somewhat higher CPM. Um, and it's better for us and it's better for YouTube for that same reason. Cool. I would also say that there is an advantage for a content creator to come to us because we're not dealing with, you know, 18 gazillion billion hours of video being uploaded every minute. We're focused on independent shows. We'll be able to do the customer service that Blip.tv is very, very focused on. Uh, from YouTube's perspective, though, and for content creators who syndicate over to YouTube, they are automatically entered into the YouTube Partner Program, which means that they will get a share of advertising revenue. It simplifies things in a way for YouTube to know that the 
content that they're going to get from Blip is safe and can carry advertising, and we will always do a 50-50 revenue share back to the content creator. Well, we've started reaching out to a bunch of content creators um, and asking them to start uploading HD um, and true HD. I, I, I think a lot of folks out there on the web tend to refer to in, enhanced definition, which is 480p, as, as high def, but that's not actually high definition. Um, that's regular NTSC television with the scan lines removed. Um, we actually want people uploading 720p or even 1080p um, in a high quality MPEG-4 master, which we can then use to distribute to the television set through Verizon and Roku and TiVo and Sony and all of our television partners, and also increasingly to play, to play that back on the web. I mean, at this point, a huge number of people out there have the internet connections and the computers necessary to play back true HD on their computer. And that is a major step forward in, in, in how people consume video on the web. And one last question. Um, the, the whole advertising business is difficult right now, and that's your business model. How do you see you know, Blip's growth, success, profitability, you know, uh, kind of, and I know you're, you're, you're well funded right now, you don't have to think about that right now, but where do you think it's going to go? Well, I think that we have a big advantage, which is that when people are watching web video shows, they are not just turning on NBC and seeing what happens next, which is really a more passive viewership. Our audience is engaged. It's people that have clicked, cl uh, searched for a video, found a video that they like, you know, they're probably a loyal audience of a web show, and then they click play to watch that video in particular. So it's a very powerful audience for an advertiser to reach because it's someone that wants to watch this content and is engaged with that content. So in many ways, we have the advantages of television, and that video is storytelling, it's video, it's emotional, it has texture to it, but then it also can have the metrics of the web so that we can track video views, we can track engagement within a video, as you've just seen from the new engagement graphs from Tube Mogul. We can track advertising impressions. Uh, we can track, you know, click-throughs at the most basic level, but then comments and all sorts of other engagement that you really are guessing at on television. So definitely we have a huge advantage in the video aspects of television, the metrics of the web, and so there's no question that there are dollars flowing from what used to be search and display over to web video and from television into video. And, I, and I'll say too, I mean, uh, however well-funded you are as a company, I don't think should have any bearing on whether or not you're thinking about the drive towards profitability. Uh, we started this company four years ago with a business model. And we're the kind of company, we work nights and weekends without any funding for a year um, because that was the right thing to do to develop the business. Um, we're actually incredibly focused on driving profitability here, not just for us, but for show creators. Uh, it is probably the most important thing that we're doing right now, and our announcements today help us drive there. Um, you know, I think Dina makes very good points about the advantages of web shows over television, over traditional display. But there's another story there too, which is that uh, marketers are increasingly embracing this medium. I mean, they really are. They're shifting. There are major brands out there that are literally moving tranches of millions of dollars from television to online video. And it's happening right now. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's kind of an amazing thing. And I think that despite the overall situation in the economy and advertising in general, uh, web video is still, uh, you know, a very growing segment. Good. Good. Well, congratulations. This is a fantastic event, and I also want to thank you guys for being so supportive of of my work and and Beat and, and all the independent content creators. Thanks very much. Thank you, Andy. It's our pleasure, man. Thank you.